you're a busy parent like me and you want to get as much help as you can, can one of these robo vacuums with a laser actually help or be a hindrance? There are four key things that you need to look at when you're buying a robot vacuum. The vacuum capability itself, how it covers the room and how it maps it out, the battery life of the device, and fourth, the recycling or bin storage. I'm going to be testing the Eufy Clean X8, which are sponsoring this video. We're going to be running tests, battery life, how good does it actually clean, how does it cope when you put obstacles. But now, let's roll the intro. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Gio from Smart Home Makers, where we help you transform your ordinary home into a smart home. I bought my first robo vacuum back in October 2018, and it was a Eufy RoboVac 30C. I'm really curious to see how this new model over here is actually going to compare. As soon as you start this off, you'll be amazed by the power. It has two turbines, and that generates 4,000 PA, which basically what it actually means that the airflow increased by 80% and the pet hair by 67%. I was quite impressed with how it adapts on carpets, on tiles, and on hard floors. It's a lot better than the Robovac 30C for sure. But the actual real improvement comes with the mapping system, which we're going to touch later on in the video. So these rubber vacuums are a time saver and they get a lot of that routine vacuuming out of the way. You do need to remember to empty the compartment. Now, when you empty the compartment, you actually need to do a little bit of maintenance all on the roller brushes and you can unclip them quite easily and pull them out. You've also got a little hair utility. So if you've got some hair stuck into the roller itself, you can just unclip it and uh, use the uh, brush part to just clean, give it a little bit of a good clean. So each time that you empty it, I would just give it a bit of clean, especially if you've got pets or if it's going on carpets. The overall capacity of the bin is 127% bigger compared to the other model, which means that you need to empty it less frequently. I tested out the mapping system. This uses a laser, which you can see over here, and it maps out the entire environment. So when you put it in a new environment, it will map it all out for the first time, and that will then allow you to do f cool things. So for example, you can do point to touch, so you can actually tell it to go and clean a specific part. You can divide the map by areas. And if you have multiple floors like I have, you can have up to five floors. So you're covered unless you've got like a hotel. Remember to turn the option on for multi-floor maps before you start using it because that will cancel the current map that you have. But we're gonna be looking at some obstacle detection. So we're gonna see how it actually copes with this room over here. Now we're gonna take some of these biscuits and we're gonna take some crisps and we're just gonna put it around over here and do some test cleaning. Now, if you're like me and you have kids around in the house, you will know that these biscuits just get everywhere. Um, so I'm curious to see how this robot vacuum actually copes with that and manages to fix it all up or not. So I've got larger pieces and smaller pieces, as you can see. And then I'm gonna throw a bunch of these crisps in the mix, which are roundish, so a little bit more difficult to get because they might get pushed off. So let's kick it off. So the map over here is actually downstairs. So what you can do is you can tap on edit map, tap on manage map, and you can see the multiple maps that it generated. So you can actually pick the most accurate one. The suction power, I'm gonna keep it power, and I'm just gonna tap play. Okay, so it started going on top of it. Okay, so first round, clear that quite well. Let's see when it gets to the next bit. So I paused the vacuum now and just wanted to show you its current location in the room. So if we look at the map, you can also rotate the map. So I had the map the wrong way around at the beginning. So now basically this was the docking station, which is over there. So it cleaned a little bit in the front. So you can see that it started cleaning it and it cleaned uh, and it's went that way. So if I want to do a spot clean, I want to clean the center part over here. So I can go and tap on spot, I can end the cleaning cycle. So there's this little dot that you can see. So I can just tap on the dot, for example, and I'm gonna go play. Wow. Oh, okay. So it's the motor spinned up. So I'm getting out of the way here, so we can let it let it do its thing. 
going under the desk, diligently going around the desk, and then we can see the map. So it's going around the perimeter of the spot itself. Right, and here we go again. Just pick that up really well. So this is what's left so far? Yes, 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 yes. So I'm trying to walk and keep out of the way of the actual robot. So there's a bunch of stuff over there still missing. Let's see if it's gonna actually pick it up or not. So you can see clearly the spot, it's sort of made a triangulation and I think it's returned to base at this stage. Nice, so we tested out the spot cleaning. So I'm gonna put an image up of what we had before and this is what we've got so far. So the main thing is, right, is obviously did a brilliant job, but there's still some of this biscuit that was outside of the spot perimeter. So I guess that you need to get the hang of how big is the spot perimeter. Now I think what you can do at this stage, for example, we can just select room. So if I select room and I select this room as an entirety and I just go play, at that point now the vacuum is just going to vacuum the whole room which will mean that it will not miss any spot so probably the, the amount of dirt that I put on the floor was bigger than what can be done in a spot clean it did a really good job on where it actually went on top of Now a really important thing like I said at the beginning battery life, battery life, battery life why is battery life that important? Well, just to give you some information, these devices, they normally auto dock. So when the battery is low, they dock and you can actually turn on an option that what it'll do is as soon as it recharges enough, it will resume the clean. So sort of continue the cleaning from where it stopped the last time. That obviously assumes that in that time, the floor hasn't got dirty again, right? So if you've got a busy family or you've got kids around, it's probably just easier just to start the cleaning cycle again from scratch. But the reality is sometimes these don't find home and it's not really a problem of the device itself. A lot of it will depend on the location that you put it. But I would also think that if you have small kids around the house, they might just turn this off, you know, flip it upside down. They might move the charging bay. So the reality of this is that it will sometimes not dock, right? And it will tell you if it's not docked and there's alerting systems in place so you can manually dock it yourself. I, because I'm using this on the multi-floor environment, I don't move the docking station each time. So I have the docking station over there, for example, but if I go downstairs and clean the kitchen, I um, might or might not bring the docking station. So sometimes it might not charge. So it's important that battery life, it, the declared battery life is 2.5 hours. So I've tested it myself and I got 131 minutes. So a little bit short on that declared number, but few things to consider. I turned the power a little bit up to the power suction mode. Now you've got four modes that you can actually turn. And obviously the higher the mode it is, the more suction power it's going to have and the more battery it's going to consume and the more noise it's going to make. So you're going to need to think about that if you're running this and if you're turning on leaving the house, you can have it make a lot of noise, but if you're running at nighttime, you know, kids asleep, you might not want to make a lot of noise, right? So you gotta have to think about those options. When it sleeps, it also drains some battery. But what I did was I was doing different cleaning cycles. Some of the cleaning cycles are a half an hour, some of the cleaning cycles were 15 minutes. In that seven hour time period, it was actively vacuuming for 131. So I don't think that's a bad result. Remember, it will depend on where you put the base um, and how frequently it's cleaning. In terms of the app, you can schedule the app. You can have a quiet times when it sort of doesn't respond with the voice because it has a, a voice to sort of help you prompt and, and give you some suggestions. And the more you do that, you're also consuming the parts of this uh, vacuum. So you'll see the parts like the brush and there are things like the filter and you can look at the app and that sort of uh, diminishes. So the more you use the device, the less the, you know, the, it goes to a certain point where it then prompts you to change and buy a new filter. So be careful with that. But I would really follow your own judgment with that. I wouldn't really 100% trust that because you know how 
how performant they are. It is a good indicator anyway to have. So I'll set up on the device is quite straightforward because I already had a Eufy account. I just downloaded the app and it was uh, easy enough to set up. This guy here uses Wi-Fi to connect. So it's gonna be, you're gonna need your Wi-Fi password conveniently. Once you've paired it to your Wi-Fi password, it should automatically detect it and you're up and running. Give it a name. Now, if you have multiple of these in the house, give it a good name and a, a voice assistant friendly name because you can hook this up, Amazon's and Google's voice assistant very easily. And if you have multiple of these, or if you're planning to have multiple of these in, in you know, different areas of your home, then uh, give it a good name so you can actually reference it so it doesn't just clean, you know, trigger them all. In terms of the cleanliness, I think this is spot on. It covers and it does great coverage. Spot cleaning uh, works really well. I also tried to throw some cupcake and all sort of stickiness on the floor and it picked up a good quantity of them. There's a model with mop and I'll have both of the models in a description down below and it's an affiliate description so if you do click it you will support the channel uh, but it will and be no cost to you. Um, but obviously with the mopping option you can also get those stickiness out because the vacuum is not really going to be able to, to clean that effectively. So good mopping uh, ability will scrub that off quite easily and actually the quicker you do it the better it's going to be. So it's all less work on you to actually go and you know sort out your kids mess. So now I'm going to put it down, we're going to put some obstacles in the room on purpose and we're going to try and clean it. Now I just want to tell you from the booklet itself it actually says to remove all toys and remove all obstacles and remove all cables before this device runs. So I'm doing something that's a little bit outside of the box but I think that's going to be the reality of your home and what's going to happen and let's check how good it is. Right, so I've got the robot vacuum right here. First obstacle, we've got this little dumbbell. We've got a teddy bear, as you can see over here. We've got the worst one, so imagine this is some loose cable, maybe you've got a charging cable uh, plugged in the wall. Um, we have the actual Moses basket for the baby. So, you know, is this gonna actually knock it, how's it gonna cope, does it go around it? So you see there's actually some space over here, there's a little bit of a Lego box. So we've got a chair, and then here we go, we've got the docking station, a little bit of dirt. So let's see how it fares out. Now I've also got this little plastic bag, which I might be tempted to throw in at a certain point. You have the three buttons over here, so you can quite conveniently just start it from the power button. Um, one of these buttons return to base, and the other one is for spot cleaning. So I'll just press this main one. So it's kicked off. And you can hear it going, so it avoids the first dumbbell. It's going around it. Let's follow it a little bit, see how it goes. It's thinking. Okay, gives it a little bit of a hit, but not too bad. It's going around the dumbbell. Now I'm gonna to try to stay too close to it, because I don't want to interfere. But obviously by the fact that I'm standing here, it is sort of interfering. Okay, so we can see it's trying to go underneath here, but it can't really fit because of that uh, laser part. So we're going to assume that its strategy is to go around the perimeter of the actual uh, room. So you can see this is the actual path. Here we go. Now I'm going to just drop this plastic bag on top of it and see if this bothers it. And it's nice, been going, been fine so far. Right, so now it's going to try and go around that basket no it's not so it's quite tight the way it sort of navigates around it as you can see vacuum versus cable again it's not recommended by the manufacturer so far so good all right so we're back in the starting point now we're going to do a test to see how it actually gets the base so the robot is here so it's got really got two paths the only path really has got this path over here and it's a bit of an awkward tight run. So it will be interesting to see how actually long it goes. It could co go this way, but they've got the teddy bear in the way, some cables. So a little bit of a challenge for this Yuffie. So I've got the app over here. Just gonna tap recharge. And it's going home. So the voice, I'm actually turned it down the volume 
but uh, it actually said going home. So it spins around. So let's see if I can actually find it. Now, this is gonna be not that easy because this object over here is actually blocking. So you can see it says heading home on the app, but it's still cleaning at the same time. So it's not really wasting time. It's gonna go around over there. Yeah, I think it's, yes, it's going for it. Going around the Moses basket. Right, it's found it. This is cool down. It's spinned off. And it's gonna dock. So that wasn't too bad. So that was quite some fun and a little bit more of a realistic example. So what are my thoughts and conclusions? Obstacles, I think it dealt with it in a good way. It was able to scan them and, and was able to move them around. So the thing with the mapping is, it will obviously map your fixed objects like fridges and things that are not going to move. But every time it runs, it's gonna to try to remap the area again. So for things that do move around, it will able to go around it. And it was quite neatly able to go around and keep cleaning, right? And just keep that perimeter. It also did a good job actually returning to base when it, had a, it didn't have really clearly a visible line of sight with the return base because that was that Moses basket in a way. But actually it was quite good and got around it in, uh, I would say in a minute and a half. So that's great. So like I said, like with the battery life, um, it really helps if the robo vacuum is really good at returning to base uh, because that will mean that you'll never run out of battery. Ergo, your floors will be cleaner because the vacuum is just gonna run more for more frequently. This is sort of the work and the that it's been doing during my recent tests. I've got a couple of Legos that have been eaten up, which I'm gonna be taking out because I don't wanna lose any pieces. If you wanna find this robot vacuum current price, check the links in the description down below so you can support the channel. But what if with your robot vacuum you could do a lot more? What if you could integrate it into your smart home and you could do things like kicking it off automatically when you leave the home or pausing the robot vacuum when you start a move on your TV. Just think of the many possibilities. And I've actually talked about this in this video over here. So check out all of my robot vacuum automations and ideas. I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.